Okay, good afternoon, friends. And us, and a special welcome to those joining online as, as well. well. I know that the family ideally would have wanted to have a, big, a huge thing with everybody present, uh, but because of the circumstances, we have to do the live stream and and have a smaller gathering here. But I know that it means a lot to the family that you've come, and so friends, thank you for being here. Uh, with, with all the COVID regulations, I know gathering is, is, is tricky these days, but you're here, and I know that your, your presence means so much to the family. Uh, we're here for a few reasons this afternoon. We're here, of course, to remember Auntie Hala and to give thanks for her life and to celebrate her life. It is a celebration. I know it's a fair day, and we're going to we're going to be grieving, but we're also going to be celebrating. And so may it be a celebration as we remember her and as we honour the life that she lived. We're here to support and care for the family, of course. And please know, guys, that we're here to support you all. We grieve with you today, and especially to you, Severa and, and Tanya and Dina and Severa Jr. and the whole family. We're here to come alongside you and to support you in your time of grief. And we're here to fix our eyes on God who alone can get us through on a day like this. He's here to comfort. He's here to, to heal. And so let's fix our eyes on him and worship him in this time. And so come, let's open in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, we come to you on a day like this with such mixed emotions, Lord. We come with joy, remembering a lady who we love deeply, cherishing the memories and cherishing having known her. But of course, Lord, we come with great sadness as we face the fact that we're not going to see her again or hear her voice or enjoy her smile. And so in this time, we call on you, O God. We call on you to draw near to us in our pain. We ask you, O oh God, to, to send your spirit onto us as we, as we gather in this moment. Come, O oh God, and let your peace fall down upon us like a blanket over our shoulders. Because we know and we believe that you are not far, you're not watching us from a distance, but you are as close as the very air that we're breathing in this moment. And so we ask you to come. We ask you to bring us comfort. We ask you to remind us of your strength and your helping hand. We ask you to pour out your encouragement onto this family. And we pray especially for the family today, Lord. We pray especially for Severo as he, as he grieves the loss of his precious wife. We can't imagine the pain that he must be feeling. And so be with him and help him. We pray for Tanya and Dino and Severo Jr., who have lost their mother. We pray that you will help them in this time of grief, Lord. And we pray for, for Joshua and Matthew and Mason, Jordan, Gabby, Lexi, Mila, Stacy, who've lost a grandmother. We ask you to comfort them, O oh God. And for everybody here, Lord, having lost a sister, an aunt, a precious friend, we ask you to remind us that you are close and that you are here and that you grieve too on a day like today. And so come, come we pray, release your spirit and may we truly encounter you in this time as we say our final goodbyes. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, friends, we're going to sing a song, and uh, the words aren't anywhere for you to, to read, but Auntie Hayla loved casting crowns, so it was one of her favorite groups. And so this is a song of theirs that I'm going to sing, and really it's a prayer that I hope that you will pray with me as you hear the words. It says, I'll praise you in the storm, and I know you guys are going through a storm, and so may it be that as you hear these words, you'll be able to praise the God of all comfort, even in your storm.
sure by now God, you would have reached out And wiped our tears away Stepped in and saved the day But once again I say amen And it's still raining As the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you As your mercy falls I'll raise my hands And praise the God who gives And takes away I'll praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am, and every tear I've cried, you hold in your hand, you never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you And you raised me up again But my strength is almost gone How can I carry on If I can't find you As the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper in the rain I'm with you, and as your mercy falls, I'll raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. I'll praise you in the storm, I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, and where I am, every tear. You hold in your hand, you never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in the storm. Oh. I lift my eyes unto the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker heaven and earth. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I'll praise you in the storm. those are powerful words and maybe you're thinking how can I praise God on a day like today well I want to read some words of Jesus from the Gospels you know one of the reasons that I think Jesus Christ has always been a very compelling figure for people across cultures across generations is because he spoke words that have resonated with all sorts of people and especially on a day like today his words help us his words give us comfort and so hear his words today, and may they bring us comfort. He said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. They will be comforted. Not they might or they could, but they will be comforted. He said, peace I leave you. 
I give you peace. I don't give to you as the world gives. And so don't let your hearts be troubled. And he said this just as he was about to die. He's, he knew his disciples would be grieving, would be facing great loss. And he said, be at peace. Be at peace. He said those great words, come to me, those who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I know, friends, that you are heavy laden today and that you're burdened. You can find rest when you come to him. But, you know, Jesus also had much to say about life. If you were to sum up Jesus' whole teaching in one word, you could use the word love. You could use the word peace, perhaps. But one good word you could choose is the word life. Because he knew that life on earth was precious. And he also knew that life is about more than just our time on earth. And so hear these words of Jesus about eternal life today. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Whoever lives, he said, by believing in me will never die. He said that great verse so many people know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, shall not die eternally, but will have eternal life. What words of hope for us today? He said, I'm the good shepherd. Uh, I know my sheep. My sheep know me. And he said, they shall never perish. I give them eternal life. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Nobody has snatched Auntie Hala out of his hand. But she's safe. She's safe with him. And so I hope that these words can give us comfort and assurance even as we grieve. And so come, let's pray again. Oh, Father, we come to praise you in the storm because only you can help us through. And because even though we are facing great loss, O oh Lord, your words remind us that we have hope even through our tears. We have hope that eternal life is ours when we believe. We have hope that eternal life is Hala's today because she believed. And so help us to hold on to this fact, O oh God. Help us, please, in this time to remember and to believe that nothing, nothing can take her out of your hand. Not even death itself can take her from your love. And so we trust in your goodness and your mercy and your compassion, O oh God, as we remember her in these moments and as we commit her to you through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, we're going to hear some words of remembrance from the family. And so can I ask Ricky to come up and do something very difficult as he shares about his mother-in-law. So I'm ready. Hi everyone, I just ask that you uh, bear with me as I try and get through this. Um, today we're here to celebrate and remember and honor Hela Skepis Fernandez, beloved by many as wife, mother, sister, granny, and friend. There are no words that can be expressed that can ease the pain that those of us left behind are feeling. Hela was, for all intents and purposes, the proverbial glue that held this family together. When I sat down to write this eulogy, it struck me just how difficult it was going to be. How do you sum up the life of someone so special on a piece of paper and talk about them in a few minutes? However, I take solace in the fact that those of us here all knew what type of person Hala was. The outpour of love and well wishes that the family have received is indicative of just what an impact she made on people's lives. Hala came from humble beginnings and had what most people would call a hard upbringing but it also made her appreciate all her blessings and God even more. I know that all her siblings had nothing but love and respect for her as she was always there for them in their time of need. When most people think of the words mother-in-law, there are quite a few thoughts that come to mind, and not all of them are flattering. Images of a mother-in-law constantly meddling in a marriage or making trouble come to mind, or perhaps the thought of a bitter old woman moving in and constantly bickering with you about your children. My mother-in-law was none of these. Hela was a sweet and gentle woman. 
She welcomed me into both her home and her family with open arms. She treated me just like a son. It wasn't just me. Hala was not only a mother to her kids, but also to a lot of her kids' friends. This was simply the person that she was. If a child was cold, she would find a coat. If a friend needed a place to sleep, her door was always open. She knew how to laugh at anything, and she was always looking for the silver lining in a gray storm cloud. You know, the relationship I had with my, my mother-in-law was one of, I used to try and rile her up, try and get her blood pressure going. And I'd push her and push her just a little bit more, and I knew that the task was done was when her audio bouquet would change from English to Afrikaans, and she would use my full names. Or how my kids would come home after being fed 10 kilos of Nutella each, and amped up on so much sugar that they were bouncing all over the place. And when I'd moan at her, she would retort with, that's what grannies are for. How do you argue with that? Hala also loved her arts and crafts and turning something ordinary into something beautiful. She'll forever be remembered for the things that she loved to do, as well as for the love that she spread to others through her kind gestures. While she'll not be with us physically today, her gentle spirit will remain with us forever in our hearts. And P.S., I hope God knows how to make a good cappuccino, because he just welcomed home the biggest fan of a good cup. All right, guys, I'm going to be reading some stuff on behalf of the family. Um, I'll be starting with a second year. Okay, this is from Sevi. Saying that I'm feeling sad would be too shallow. Words just can't explain how I'm feeling so low. Someone so precious, so dear, it's just not possible to imagine. That you won't be near, Mom. This goodbye is going to be painfully hard and long. But like you always said, I'll try to be strong. Next up, I got something from Dino. <laughs> Mother, you gave me love and watched me grow. You taught me things I'd need to know. You comforted me and dried my tears. You gave me laughter throughout the years. You taught me to care, to be understanding. I know there were times I was so demanding. Your wisdom and strength guided me through. Without your love, I don't know what I'd do. That constant faith you had in me has given me wings and set me free. Thank you so much just for being you. All the love, the laughter, you're the best. It's true. Next up, I got some from Tanya. Thank you to everyone for being with us today to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman, my mother, Hala. My mom was an amazing woman who taught me a lot. The most important lessons were not verbal, they were her interactions. I always knew she loved me, and she was always there when I needed her the most. Whenever I talk to anyone about my mom, their memories of her are all the same. What a beautiful lady, inside and out. Someone that was always smiling and had a glow about her, and I can definitely say all this was true. This is how I'll always remember my mom, my best friend in my party, planning bestie. I can only hope to be as special as she was to so many people. One thing that I'll always remember is the way my mom would always call me her sunshine, but I can only hope and pray she knew that she was also mine. I love you, mom, and you will always be a part of me. Your memory will live on in all our hearts forever. We found something a little bit special for Tanya to say as well online. Somewhere in my heart, beneath all my grief and pain, is a smile I still wear at the sound of your dear name. The precious word is mother. She was the world, you see. But now my heart is breaking. She's no longer here with me. God chose her for his angel to watch from above. To guide me and advise me and know that I'm still loved. The day that she had to leave, when all her life was through, God had better plans for her. This I surely knew. When I think of her kind heart and all those loving years, my memories surround me and I can't hold back the tears. She truly was my best friend. Someone I could confide in. She always had a tender touch and a warm and gentle grin. I want to thank you, Mother, for teaching me so well. And though the time has come that I must bid you this farewell, I remember you. I remember all you've taught me and make you proud. You'll see. Thank you, dear Mother for all the love you showed me. Although you've left this earth and now you've taken flight, 
I know that you are here with me each morning, noon, and night. Um, from my side, babe, you were my rock. When I went through this, I'll be your boulder. Guys, as you can imagine, Dad couldn't really sit down and write much. It's too hard to try and put everything in words of the love he felt for Mom. It's, it's impossible. So what we've decided is we're going to play a song by Lionel Richie called Goodbye. And I ask that everyone please just pay attention to the words. It's his feelings summed up pretty much how he feels for Mom. Thank you. It's not easy. It's not easy to say goodbye. Oh, my friends, I'm so sorry for your loss today. I can, I can feel, I can feel the the pain that you are going through today. And I know it's not easy. I want to read one last passage from the Gospels. Uh, I actually read a bit of it earlier, but let me read the whole thing. Jesus said this. Uh, in Matthew 11, come to me, all you who are weary 
and heavy laden or, he or burdened, as the new translations say, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, he said, and my burden is light. You know, there's an old saying that says, sorrow comes on horseback, but goes away on foot. In today's terms, you might say sorrow comes in a, in a Porsche or in a, sorry, in a BMW, of course, and goes away on foot. In other words, sorrow has a way of, of coming up faster than you could ever have imagined, and then it just doesn't go away. It just lingers. It just stays there. And I, I think you know what this means today. I think you're feeling that, how this bombshell hit you out of nowhere, and now you're all kind of staggering, trying to figure out when is it going to disappear. And perhaps when it comes to the death of a loved one, it never fully disappears. You always have that sense of loss. And in our grief, we try to figure out what to do. It happens in strange ways. I remember when my grand died unex very unexpectedly, uh, it was months later when I was driving through her neighborhood and I thought, hey, I'll go visit Gran. And I sort of had to stop myself and say, hang on, how did that, how did that pop into my head? Grief has a way of, of lingering with you and, and you're, you can't really move forward as you want to. But there is hope. And I believe that our hope is in Jesus today. Jesus speaks these words into your grief. Come to me. He said, come to me when you're burdened, and I will give you rest. On a day like today, there's all sorts of places we can go to try to find rest for our souls. We eat too much, too much ice cream, maybe. We drink too much, too much alcohol to try and numb the pain. We overwork in times as they move forward, or we numb ourselves at the TV. We go into our own bubbles. We, we try to go to all sorts of places to deal with this pain. And Jesus says, come to me. Come to me with your pain. How could he say such a thing? How could he say such a thing? I want to suggest to you today that he said it for a reason. He said it knowing that he had the power to bring healing and to bring hope into even the most painful situations. And so come to Jesus today. I want to suggest three things that this means for you as a family. First is this, come to Jesus and cry. Come to Jesus and cry today. We can mourn, we can grieve, we can struggle. It's okay. He doesn't expect us to have it all together. You know, I've done so many funerals where I hear somebody saying, I have to be strong. I have to be strong for the family today. I have to be strong for the kids today. And I want to say, no, you don't. You don't. In fact, showing your grief is probably going to do more good in the long run. Some cultures struggle with this. Have you noticed this? In fact, us whiteies tend to struggle with it more than our black brothers and sisters who mourn, they wail, they, there's, a whole, there's a whole tradition behind it. And it's done on purpose so that you can, the family can grieve and they can spend weeks actually grieving and not trying to stuff it all down. You know, come to Jesus today and cry. It's okay. It's okay to let it out. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to have tears in your eyes today. In fact, you should. You should. Jesus himself, a strong man, a carpenter in those days, he must have, he must have had muscles. He must have had, had fingers with calluses on them from all the hard labor that he did. Jesus himself cried at a funeral. We see it in John chapter 11. He goes to the graveside of his friend Lazarus. The shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Two words. And that says it all. He felt that sadness wash over him. He felt that hurt that you're feeling today when he lost a precious friend. And so you can feel it too. In fact, there's an old gospel song that says, When I cry, you cry. When I hurt, you hurt. When I've lost someone, it takes a piece of you too. And so I want to say to you today, friends, God weeps as we weep today. And so grieve. Grieve and know that God is close to you as you grieve. But secondly, let's come to Jesus today and celebrate. 
and celebrate. We said it earlier today that today is a celebration and a celebration of a life well lived. Now, I just shared that the shortest verse in the Bible is two, two words, Jesus wept. Well, there's another verse that's only two words. You know what it says? Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Christians have this tension in their lives. They can, they can grieve deeply and be in a really bad place and yet rejoice. Yet rejoice because God is with them. And so I want to say to you, come and celebrate. Come and rejoice today, even though you are crying, even though you have tears. Come and celebrate the great privilege of having known Auntie Hala. Cherish the memories. What a life it was that she lived. You know, I, I enjoy reading biographies. I always like to read what people have gotten up to in their lives. You know, you know what I've noticed? Biographies very rarely focus on a person's death. Maybe the, the last few pages or one chapter deals with the death, but it's their life that you celebrate. It's, your, it's their life that you read about and enjoy and learn from. And oh, let's do the same today. Let's not focus too much on her death, but let's remember her life and cherish it. What a life it was. We just heard it in the eulogies. What a, what a wonderful person she was. What a privilege to have known this lady. Cherish that. Oh, please cherish that. I didn't know her. And having heard the stories that you told me when I chatted with you guys and just having heard what you're saying today, I wish I had. I wish I'd seen that smile. I wish I'd heard that voice. She sounds like such a special person. Uh, she was the anchor of the family is what you told me. Always there for everyone. Always helping everybody. Always smiling. What a privilege, as I said, to have, to have known such a special person. And I know you've learned from her. You've learned from her deep faith. You've learned from her strength and her commitment. You've learned from her resolve, her compassion. I'm sure you've heard it said, it's not about the day you're born or the day you die. It's about the dash between the days. Have you heard that? It's about the dash. Think of it. You, you show up on Hala's dash. And that's no small thing. That's no small thing. That's something to be cherished. That's something to be celebrated. Because her dash told a story. It told a story of love, of strength, of compassion. And you all, friends, were part of that story. Please don't take that for granted. Please don't forget that. But, but cherish it and celebrate it today. Come to Jesus and celebrate the fact that you crossed paths with such a special person. And can I suggest that as God looks back on her life, he celebrates too? I don't believe that, that Hala was created by accident. I think God, in his wisdom, put this person together with all of her quirks and all of her ways and all of her habits and all the things she was. I believe that God cherished her and made her. He, he knitted her together in her mother's womb back in 1955 and he he breathed life into her that very first moment of her life and he sustained her through some difficult times and he celebrated with her through some great times he saw the good he saw the bad and we've all got a bit of bad in us let's be honest but he saw it and he loved her anyway the bible is one great long story of god loving people even when they least deserve it there's a great verse in Psalm 103 where David, who had done some bad things in his life, said this, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Then he said, He does not treat us as our sins deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. I can imagine, I can imagine God looking at Hala as life and celebrating and saying, Amen. What a life. What a life. And so let's come to Jesus today and celebrate. Let's come and not, not try to stuff all of that away and forget about it, but let's remember, let's cherish every memory. And let, you know what else we can celebrate? is the new life that she has now. A minister was doing a funeral one day uh, in a graveyard, and a little girl came skipping through the graveyard singing and and having a jolly time. So the minister sort of pulled her aside and said, don't you know where you are? 
And she said, no, I only passed through this place on my way home. I only passed through this place on my way home. Auntie Hala has passed through this place, and she's home. What a home it is. Think of it, no more pain, no more struggle, no more anxiety, no worry, no rush. It's a place of joy, it's a place of peace, it's a place of tranquility. We can come to Jesus today and celebrate that she is in such a wonderful place. You know, a friend of mine was doing the eulogy at his mother's funeral. I always remember this. She'd struggled in those last few months. She'd been very sick. She had a, a, a tough end. And she got very sick and died. And, and I remember him standing up at, at his mother's funeral and he said, don't rest in peace, mom. And everyone sort of went, what? And he said, I want you to dance. I want you to, I want you to go for it in heaven. Don't rest in peace. Just go nuts. Go nuts in your new home. I have a picture of Auntie Hala. Not sitting on a cloud somewhere, just lazing about. No, no, no. I have a picture of her with a new body, energy she never had when she was here, just going berserk, <laughs> having the most incredible time, reunited with people that she'd lost, full of joy. Don't rest in peace. Go for it. Celebrate while you're up there, Auntie Hala, and we'll celebrate with you. It was Oswald Chambers who said, Death is God's delightful way of giving us life. So come to Jesus today and celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate her life on earth. Celebrate the new life she has now. And then lastly, let me suggest, friends, that we can come to Jesus today and change. And change. You know, sometimes it takes staring death in the face to realize your own time is short. We were just saying, Ricky and I, before the service, how bad it's been these last two months. Last year, it was like you heard of somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who had COVID. This time around, it's just everywhere. There's so much death all around us. And James, the brother of Jesus, all those years ago, knew this. He, he, wrote, he wrote these words. You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow, he said. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then disappears. Hmm. And so our time is short, friends. I'm, I'm sure some of you are sitting here saying, if only I'd said this to her while I still had the chance. If only I'd done this with her like I said I was going to. But then life was too short. Maybe, friends, this is your day to come to Jesus and change while you still have the chance. Maybe today is the day that you forgive somebody that you've been angry with while you still have the chance. Maybe today's the day you quit holding a grudge because you've got the chance to. Maybe today you apologize to somebody. Maybe today you change your ways because you realize time is short. And you know what? Change is possible. When you live in Jesus' strength and in his power, change is possible. And so, friends, today come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and put those changes in place. You know what? You know what I've noticed in my short time in ministry? When people are dying and they know it, they don't say, bring me my bank accounts, bring me my, my statements so I can see how well I've done. They don't say, bring me all my fancy stuff, bring me all my diplomas and all the success that I've, that I've had. You know what they say? They say, bring me my loved ones. Bring me the people that I care about. Because if, if my time is short, I want to spend it with them. Come to Jesus today and change and, and give your life to the people that matter, friends. Come to Jesus and change. Because here you have the people that matter in your life. All around you today. You've still got the chance to enjoy them and to make amends while, while you're here. Don't pass up the opportunity. Life's too short to walk away from the change that is possible. And so, friends, as you and I face this grief today, hear those words of Jesus again. Come to me. Come to me. And I hope you'll do it. I hope you'll come to Jesus and cry. Let it out and allow yourself to grieve. I hope you'll come to Jesus and celebrate. Celebrate the life of a precious loved one. Celebrate her new life. 
and then come to Jesus and change. Change while you still can. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you that even on a day like today, we can come to you. We can come to you and find rest for our souls. And Father, we do. We come grieving. We come without tears. We let them out. And we acknowledge and thank you that you are close. And that you, even through our tears, celebrate us and give us hope. Father, as we come to you, we also come to you with, with thankfulness. Oh, thank you for this wonderful person who we knew and loved. Thank you for the privilege of having shown up on her dash. Thank you for all the good memories, and we cherish them today with all our hearts. But Father, we come to you to change. We come to you and give you our lives and ask you to give us the courage to say sorry, to make amends, to give our lives for the people that matter while we still can. And so for all these things, we thank you. And Lord, we pray now for the family as they return to life. Everyone else goes back to life as normal, and for them, life is never normal again. And so I pray for your strength and your comfort to be poured out into their lives and for your healing to follow them in the days and weeks to come. And may their memories of Hela always give them a reason to smile. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So friends, one last song before we close. And this one appropriately is called Come to Jesus. And I hope the words are going to give us something to think about.
And with your final heartbeats, kiss the world goodbye. Then go in peace and laugh on glory's side. And fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus. And live. And so Hela has flown to Jesus, where she truly lives. Friends, I'm going to ask you to stand for the final prayers. After I've pronounced these final prayers, uh, we're going to hear a song, a special piece of music that she loved so much. And then I'm going to just invite you to hang around and have something to eat. And I know the family will appreciate it if you come and say some words and just share some time with them. And so come, let's, let's close in prayer. Merciful God, you have made us all and given your Son, Jesus Christ, for our redemption. And so we commend our sister, Hela Skepas Fernandez, to your perfect wisdom and mercy. For, O oh God, in you alone we put our trust. Lord, we release her to you now. We let go. And we ask you to receive her. Receive her into the arms of mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace. For as much as our sister Hela has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in his great mercy has called her to himself, we therefore commit her body to cremation, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, who made your Son Jesus to be the resurrection and the life, raise us, we pray from the death of sin to the life of holiness, that when we depart this life, we may be reunited with our sister, Hela, and be found acceptable to you for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, world without end. Amen. So, my friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you all today and forevermore. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for coming. Go in peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.